All right, in the last video then, we saw how we can set up a class or a blueprint. We called our blueprint or class dog with a capital D. We created this thing called a constructor, and the idea here was this was a method that would run any time an instance of a dog was created from our class. And so in this case, it's not doing anything, it's just kind of a placeholder saying, yes, I know I'm supposed to put some code here, but I don't have some valid code to put in here yet, so just put the word pass. If you don't put it in here, then if I run this uh, code, I'll get an error. And so I need to put in the word pass just to say I acknowledge I'm supposed to put something here. Let's just run it and see, yep, something happened. Okay, so remember then that I have this variable. I'm creating a new dog. I'm creating it from our class, which is a blueprint of what dogs should look like. And in order, this is how I'm creating that uh, object from the class. So that should be a review from the last video. Uh, <clears throat> then we were looking at this constructor then as double underscore init double underscore. We said in the short run that this word self goes in here. We don't really know what it means yet, but you promised us that you would tell us and I will. So. Uh, let's let's just keep rolling with the examples and see what happens. All right, so in our PowerPoint, there was a suggestion that in our dog, there would be some properties or attributes, such as the dog has a name and the dog has an age and a weight. So for simplicity right now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give the dog class, a name, and a weight. So what we'll do is very similar to what we've seen before when we create methods. We're going to create more parameters, one called name and one called weight. And just like we've done before, we are expecting when we, create, when we run this method that we're supposed to be receiving some values in order to fill in these variables. That should be kind of a review from methods. All right, sounds like a plan. So how is this gonna work? Well, let's see, let's get some of those values from the users. So let's do dog name equals input. What is the dog's name? And let's also do the same thing for weight. W-I-G-H-T equals input. What is, I'm gonna use that string formatting. I'm gonna put the dog's name here not because I don't have to concatenate it, I'm just going to put the dog's name in this placeholder, uh, wait. And then I need to put the word format and tell the placeholder what uh, variable is going to be used to fill in that placeholder here. I'm gonna use dog name. Need to close off my input, there we go. And then I need to convert all that to an int because it's a wait, so I need that to be an int. Whew, that's a lot in one sentence, but it's certainly something you can do. That's all legal. So at the moment then, nothing really is happening. We're just getting some information. Let's just run it to make sure we're not getting a compile error. What is the dog's name? We had Fluffy, and Fluffy was five pounds. And we get this error saying, init is missing two required positional arguments. Okay, so remember when we put in these are these parameters and we said that we've got to pass the information. So when we created the instance of this dog, this method ran and it failed because it says, wait a minute, you're supposed to send us some values. Now self, all that means, and we'll see an example of it in a minute, all that really means is automatically for us something we don't have to worry about when we call this dog method automatically the instance or this dog one is being sent for us and put into self. In other words, if we had done dog two equals dog, oops, equals, gotta use equal sign, dog, this time dog two object, which is unique from dog one. Remember when we saw the unique memory addresses? So both of these are unique dogs and every time this method is run automatically for us, this dog too goes into self. We don't have to deal with it, but that's why we have to put it there. And I'll show you another example of that in a minute. When we run dog one then, that particular dog, or in this case, Fluffy, as opposed to like in the PowerPoint, dog two might be Goldie, 
that particular dog goes into self, so it's unique each time we run it. All right, so we'll see a more examples of that in the short run. So we don't have to worry about self because that's being taken care of for us, but now we have to send these two arguments. So we just received that from our user, so I can type in dog name and dog weight. In other words, I cannot, because I have these argument, these parameters in here now, I cannot create a dog unless I send this data to the constructor. All right, so now when I run this, it should work, although it's not really doing anything with it at the moment, but at least it's gonna run. I guess I should have said fluffy, but there's my dog, JD, he's 95 pounds. Okay, so what can we do with this? Because we saw in the PowerPoint that in the class dog, there was, uh, it had an attribute of name and weight that supposedly all my dogs were supposed to receive. So let's see, I'm gonna get rid of this word pass now. And what we're going to do is we're going to say self, <clears throat> um, let's see, I'm going to put dog, I, I'm trying to put different variables so it's not confusing. Um, let's see, uh, dog he name, I'm just trying to give something different, equals uh, name and self dot doggy weight equals Wait, these all can be, well, let me just keep it this way and I'll explain that later. Okay, so what we're doing now here is we're saying, remember, self is the unique dog. So for this unique dog that I received in self, the property name is doggy name and assign it to whatever got sent over as an argument. So this particular dog, in other words, dog one in this first case, Dog1, his, he's got a variable name or a property name of doggy name, and that's going to be assigned whatever we sent. So we sent whatever the user put in. In other words, if we had hard-coded this, we would have sent Fluffy. So now Fluffy would have been in here. But instead, we sent over dog name. So that should look familiar from when we did, did methods. Okay, so what we've done then is we've identified that dog, that our class dog has two properties or attributes. One is called doggy name and one is called doggy weight. So if I want to print out, print dog one, let's see, um, my name is, uh, I'm going to use that print format, uh, my name is format Let's do dog, oops, format, parenthesis. My name is dog1 dot, and what is the property that was received from the dog uh, blueprint? Well, it was doggy name. So I'm going to print doggy name. You know, just for, to make it simple for now, let me just print dog1 dot doggy name, okay? So what we're doing here is now that this instance or this object or this unique dog was created from this blueprint, this individual dog now has a variable name or a property name, doggy name. It also has a doggy weight variable name, so we can print that out. Print dog one dot doggy weight. And let's see if that works. So if we run it now, what is the dog's name? Well, we had Fluffy, and he was eight pounds. Oh, I guess I spelled weight wrong. So I guess that's important. Let's spell weight wrong, or correct, W-I-G-H-T, okay. And we'll run it again and see if I haven't fixed my errors. Dog's name was Fluffy, and his weight was eight pounds. And so it is printing out dog one doggy name and then dog one doggy weight. So the individual, the unique, each unique dog then is receiving from the blueprint these attribute names of doggy name and doggy weight. And dog one has its own unique variable doggy name, which is fluffy and its own value for doggy weight. Let's try a second one and just see how it works. Dog2 equals, we've got to create a new instance of the dog. We have to send over, I'm just going to hard code it this time, uh, 
we're going to send it over. The name will be Goldie. And Goldie will have, uh, I think Goldie was 85 pounds or something like that. So now let's just copy and paste these two over. And we're going to, so recognize then that the dog two, which was also created from our dog class or our dog blueprint, also has the same attributes or variable names. And so we can call those attributes and vari variable name, but they're going to be unique for the second dog. So let's run that and verify that that's working. So dog one uh, still recognizing that we have to give the name here. So I think that was Fluffy. Maybe Fluffy grew since the last time we did this and now Fluffy's 15 pounds. And then you can see that dog two printed out its unique values of the same variable names because they're unique objects. So now we're, we're starting to see how we can create individual, uh, let's see, not individual, individual values from the same property names that we got from the blueprint. So now let's find a way, in our next video, we're gonna find a way to um, make this print make more sense. So we're gonna start to see methods that are being created in our dog uh, blueprint.